on cornerofthegalaxy.com. It's time for another episode of Corner of the Galaxy from the Box, the show that gets you behind the scenes of the LA Galaxy and into the minds of soccer reporters and MLS experts. Your hosts for the day are Corner of the Galaxy's Josh Gessman and LA Times soccer reporter Kevin Baxter. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy from the Box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Monday, March 13th, LA Galaxy. Get a 0-0 draw. I was going to say 1-1, like there was two goals in that game. There definitely weren't two goals in that game. LA Galaxy get a 0-0 draw against Sporting Kansas City. We'll talk about the stalemate, talk about why it probably doesn't make anybody feel better about the LA Galaxy. Uh, and and maybe not about the home opener that's coming up against Vancouver. We'll lead a little into that Vancouver game as well. Talk about all the stuff that happened in between, including another rumored update on that left back. So we got something to talk about tonight, and he's actually here this time. We're glad to have him back. It's Kevin, the Panda Baxter. Kev, how's it going, bud? Can I press the button now? You did it. Yeah, I'm so proud I of did. you. You don't even understand. How many shows is this for you? Like 300? And, and you that's nailed it. Like that. I got the button. Well, I can press it again and go quiet. No, hey, do, let's by not the way, do, that. do you know what Thursday is? Thursday. What is Thursday? I don't know what Thursday is. What Thursday? Thursday is National Panda Day. I can't, I, only you would have a prop for that. A panda that yep. says March 16th, National Panda National Day. National Panda Day. That you like scotch taped to it in. Like, I did. You, you can see the tape right there. It yeah. looks like a diaper. Yes, it, it, it does look like a diaper. Very good. So, hey, how have you been? It feels like we haven't seen you in a while. Because you haven't. I know. I know. You've been off uh, gallivanting well, around. You've been having personal time. I'm not I'm not familiar with any of that. Well, and the Galaxy haven't played at home this month. No. No. I mean, they. I mean, it feels like they haven't played. Uh, well, technically, they haven't played a game that counts in 2023 at home yet. So the home opener coming no. up this weekend. Yet, but but you're correct. They have e- not even played if you game. expand. That's right. Even if you expand home to include the Rose Bowl, they haven't played a game at home. Yeah, because they didn't play there either. They haven't played in this time zone yet. <laughs> not officially it does you know it was funny i was talking to jonathan bond after the game uh galaxy zero zero draw in case you you were living under a rock or you somehow found this bond podcast. 11 11 yeah. saves 11 one. saves one off his career high he had a game where he had 12 12 saves in there um but i was talking to jonathan bond after and he goes you know and maybe it's perspective or maybe it's not i don't know uh, he says, you know, we've had to play two tough, really tough places to start with. Dallas, which is, is I agree, and it's been always a boogie sort of place for the LA Galaxy to go to and not win, right? So losing at Dallas is nothing new for the LA Galaxy, and that's been true for a very long time. Um, and then they go to Sporting Kansas City, another place they don't get a lot of wins uh, out of. In fact, did you know Greg Vanny has had has failed to beat Peter Vermees in now, I think, eight meetings? That's eight meetings and, and it, across Toronto, across now the LA Galaxy. All those eight times he's played Peter Vermees, Peter's either tied the game or won every single time. Well, and the Galaxy have always had uh, trouble going to Children's Mercy Park, even when it wasn't called Children's Mercy Park. They, yeah. they just don't seem to play well there. I don't know what it is. It's a, it's a nice place. I don't know it why is. they don't play well there. Well, one is Sporting Kansas City is a perennially good team. Now, they haven't been in the last couple seasons and injuries and all sorts of things, but Vermees usually puts together a pretty good product. So that's one. Um, and it's it's a pretty far trip. It's further than you think it is. Right, it's one of those sneaky trips that you're like, oh, how far away? Well, it's pretty far away, actually. You fly right over Denver and keep going. Uh, you know, one S- state away. S- Sucky Airport. I mean, I, I, they didn't have to really worry about that because they were chartered, so they, they didn't spend any time at the terminal. But I do not like that airport. I, I do. So two games in. This is match day three. Technically, Galaxy got to skip match day one. Um, and, and MLS switching to match days, by the way, it's player of the match day player. This it's a, it's a real concerted effort to sort of 
I don't know, unconfuse some things, I guess. I don't know what they're trying to do, but it used to be player of the week. And then we'd have to vote on some. Remember when there would be two games in the week and then sometimes there weren't two games in the week. Sometimes the week it was just that one game on the Wednesday and sometimes the game was like. So I guess they're trying to make it a little more unconfusing uh, in some ways. But, you know, match day three has now been played. The LA Galaxy through do, do. Do we see anything? Do we even think the LA Galaxy are going to be like this? down the road down the in the future no no, you can't well espn has them 22nd in their in their power rankings down from 20th a week ago but any you know trying to make any judgment on the galaxy i mean they're missing two of their three designated players and their leading scorer they're missing chicharito and and costa who are supposed to return to train training this week and as we talked before the show started i don't see them playing before the end of the month and they're going to vancouver this week i don't see them being ready for that next week is portland on the turf in portland Guys with leg injuries, you don't want to send them out on the turf. Then the following game, this is the next home game after that would be April 1st against Seattle. I could see them playing in that one. But the Galaxy, you know, the the Araujo replacement has not arrived yet. There's no real timetable, definite timetable for him. It seems like he said goodbye. Lucas Caligari said goodbye to his team today in a post. So we imagine that this means he is moving. And Greg had indicated he thought he would be arriving this week after last week, whenever they said maybe it was going to be last week. But it definitely feels like this week. Still doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying that it seems like he will be arriving this week. Right, and and you're going to talk later about a rumor about another player who who would presumably be a starter for much of the season, and right. then if you say Kula Bali, you know he's coming back from he had to go to France for some personal reasons, him coming back. If you look at all those people, you can make the argument that the Galaxy are missing five starters in their first two games. I did, five I did. guys who will be. It was go like ahead. seven. It was like seven the first game because I didn't. I thought Jalen Neal would be a starter eventually, and so yeah. I sort of counted him. And like there were some other little movements in there that I was like, "Hey, I expect that this guy is going to go this way, or Raheem is going to, you know." So like between five and seven players, I expect sort of the turnover. But from this week's lineup, maybe five players. I think you're right. You nailed it. Five players that could and, come in. And Gaspar has still got the growing injury. And you, so- you made you made him sound so like exotic. With like Gaspar, Gaspar, Gaspar. He's like, wow, is that that French guy? Or well, let's see, what is the way you, Gaspar? The way you say it, the way you say it, sounds like Casper, the friendly ghost. That's because that's how you say his last name, Gaspar. Okay, see, that's okay, why I don't yes. like that. I think yes. it's ghost. Yes, but anyway, Gaspar, the point is, the Galaxy are missing a lot of their players, and right. a lot of the players that they're going to be counting on this year. So to say, oh, this is the Galaxy, this is the way they're going to play, that's a little unfair. Now, at the same token. Would those players come back? I don't think this is a supporter shield contender. I think it's a definite playoff team. I don't think even with everybody in there, it's a playoff team only. I don't think it's a supporter shield contender. But in any case, I don't think it's the 22nd strongest team in the league either. I think it should be much higher than that. Yeah. Um, here's here's my take sort of on it is that um, I don't blame the Galaxy for trying to be careful with their signings and getting the right people in and doing all that stuff. I don't blame them for that. But it seems like an awful lot of hooey that they were like, but we have to be ready to play game one. It's like you weren't ready to play LAFC at the Rose Bowl. You weren't ready to play Dallas and Dallas. You weren't ready to play sport. This team is not ready. And it's it's not so much that there is um, that the, the players on the field aren't playing. And and certainly some of them aren't playing up to their capabilities at all. We could talk about Ricky Pooge and Gaston Brugman having not necessarily very good games. <laughs> Um, to start this, but it's also the fact that the team and the pieces and the puzzles and all the things that they have in there, they're not here. And that's the galaxy's fault too. Like that's, you can't separate those two things. And I don't don't think Greg Vanny should get a pass for that either. He's the one in charge of putting this roster together. So for the first, and we'll say three games, because we'll say that they were going to have to play that LAFC game. Um, but we've seen nothing to indicate that this team is, is quote unquote ready to, to really play this season so far. They've seemed, um, they've seemed timid. They've seemed not well prepared against the proponent. Although I will say that maybe Vanny isn't as stubborn as everybody makes him out to be because the Galaxy certainly did bunker a lot more against Sporting Kansas City and somehow survived that. But I mean, there was no danger in the LA Galaxy attack all night. There was there was nothing there that you're saying, oh, they're going to break through. You know, I'm totally with you 100%. I, I've been hypercritical of Greg Vanny because he had 18 weeks before the opener from the last playoff game to the opener to get things settled down to get the roster that he wants in, and, and he didn't really make any moves during the winter. Um, I, I was arguing with Scott French about this at the LAFC game last night. He now sits next to me at LAFC games. For, I don't know why they played musical chairs, but anyway, he's Scott's did, next did to you, me. Did you lose so, a bet? 
Is that why? No. Yeah. no. Okay. Just check. So we talked quite a bit about this and, 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 uh, I was making some of the same points you weren't. Scott was pushing back. He said, um, you know, they didn't lose, no, they were going to lose Araujo. So you really can't blame him for that. That's fair. I mean, they, okay, they didn't know. Do you know what Greg Vanny says? About that, by the way, Greg Vanny saying that would be counter to what Scott French says. Greg Vanny says they knew that there was always going to be interest in Araujo and there were guys that they had on the list that were ready to sort of come in whenever they lost Araujo if they did. So they were as prepared for losing Julian Araujo as they could be. And yes, it happened at the end of the window, and I will agree with that. But they were as prepared for Araujo leaving as anybody could be, I believe, at this but point. It- and and then, you know, they didn't know Grant Sear was going to leave and stay home. I think they counted on him coming back. They did trade uh, Cabral because they needed the money after the suspension. That Now, that ha- the, the suspension and the penalties happened in early December, giving them a month before training camp opened and, and two and a half months approximately before the season started. They had plenty of time to take care of that. Um, and, you know, in the offseason, they added two players. They added, what, Memo, Memo Rodriguez and, and Chris Malinga. Malinga. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that was it. And and when you're looking at all the holes they had to fill, I just don't think they moved with, uh, you know, they didn't move quickly enough, especially when they know that when the window closes in April, they're done. Can, can, um, so, can, yeah. can we also say, though, that that maybe, and, and I think this is, this is the balancing act that they're trying to do, and I can sort of understand it, is that you're right with only one window, they're trying to be careful with these. They're trying to get the guys that they want. They're trying to do that thing. And maybe the slowness or the deliberate actions they're taking right now pay off in the end. And so this is something that in the moment we can certainly judge. But as it goes down in the next three, four months, that's when we really actually get to see whether or not they were correct or not. Because while I believe that MLS regular season means something, it means a lot less whenever 18 teams get into the playoffs. And if you're worried about the first three games or four games or five games, that type of thing, uh, if you're the LA galaxy discounting those import the, the importance of those games, I think that that is happening. I think it's a deliberate thing to be like, we're, we're saying we don't have to be right now. We have to be ready in, you know, in week, week 10, week 12, week 15. That's when we need to be ready. Um, and that worked last year. That worked did. last year, but here's, and, and, and they're not going to get that in, probably not going to get that infusion of talent in the middle of the summer because of the suspension. But but here's one place I'll push back. And and the Galaxy have always been the big club. They're, they've been right. the big ambitious club in the league. They have been the leaders of the league and those kind of things. And to see and to he, see and hear an LA Galaxy team saying, hey, you know what? We'll be ready by week 10, by week 12. We're, we're, we're coming along slowly. The first games really don't matter much. Guess what? If they'd played that LAFC game, the way LAFC is playing right now, LAFC would have won that game. The Galaxy would be three games into the season, they'd be winless. Uh, you know, maybe if they had some of their players in, in that game in, in Kansas city was, was winnable. Right. That was three points or well, two points. Cause they got one. That was two right. points that they gave up. These points count now just as much as they count in August. And yeah. it, it just, it just feels funny to hear an LA galaxy team saying, yeah, you know, we'll be ready when, you know, later we'll, we'll, we'll get it together. Don't worry. Galaxy has always been, you know, we're the team. We're going to go wire to wire. That's not this galaxy team. It, it is one of those things and I'm, I'm back and forth on it. I look at Greg Vanny and the position he's been put in and the dilemma that he's been put in. And it's not something that most coaches have ever had to deal with, which is they're not going to get a summer window, right? Like the, you go into that knowing you're not going to, it's not like he can lean on his experience of not having, of having other teams suspended during the summer window. He doesn't have that. And so all you have is a theory on how to attack that, right? There's no, there's no roadmap for this in terms of how to survive without internationals. And, and let's be honest, in Major League Soccer, if your internationals are good, you usually have a good team. Yes, you need the role players. Yes, you need some other things. But those eight international slots or nine as the LA Galaxy start adding some more here, those nine international slots are very important. They need to pay off for you. Um, and if you, I mean, and it's a cliche at this point almost to point back and say, well, look at they got Ricky Pooj and Gaston Brogman, right? And you're like, oh, okay. But that summer transfer window, nobody's sort of navigated that before. I almost, I, I, I'm, I, I will, I will walk this back as soon as I say it. But I almost feel it's not fair to Vanny to have to try to navigate that and be successful and try to rebuild this team and try to do everything he's doing. Having said that, it's his job and he has to do it. That was my walk back. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be like, oh, I feel sorry for you, that type of thing. But the position that he's been put in is very much a. 
yeah, you have to succeed. We don't care if, you know, we screwed everything up. We don't care if it was because of, you know, the organization that we got caught cheating and, you know, everything happened and, and that. It does not matter to you, Greg. You have to go out and perform. And quite honestly, fans are going to say that. It doesn't matter. You have to perform. I mean, but he's going to be the one, the first person fired in that year is going to be Greg Vanny if Vanny doesn't get things going and the, and the team doesn't do it. I'm, I I think he has a lot of rope. I think he can do a lot of things. I think he'll get some time. But, I mean, Kevin, 18 teams make the playoffs. If you're not one of those playoffs teams, I think everybody should automatically get fired if, you, if you're yeah, not one if of those, the Galaxy right? don't make, Yeah, if the Galaxy don't make the playoffs. But, but here's the thing, you know, maybe Vanny is reading this right, and I'll be the first one to admit that if I was a coach and I knew what I was talking about, I would be the coach. I'm not the coach. I'm the guy looking at the coach and making all <laughs> kinds of silly comments. I think Vanny is looking at this season and saying, look, this team we have right now, maybe even the team we'll have in, in, in a few months, is not is not a dominant team. It's not going to compete for the supporter shield. However, with all of these tournaments, with uh, you know the LAFC playing in Champions League, uh, they, they have the Campeones Cup, then with we have the League's Cup, um, there's the US Open Cup. You know, maybe Vanny's looking at it and saying, you know what, those top teams are going to play so many games, they're going to beat themselves up. We have time. We bring players in late in the season where they're not, they don't have the wear and tear of the early season games and all the travel. You know, they're a little more rested. Maybe we hit that playoff time with a little bit more skip in our step than some of the other teams. And, and if you look at the core of this Galaxy team, Chicharito uh, with Ricky, some of the players they're bringing in, there's enough talent to make a playoff run. If they get, right. they should get into playoffs. And if they make a, if they get there, they're as good as any other team over over a short stretch like a playoff tournament. So maybe Vanny's lining this thing up correctly, saying, look, we don't have a team that can play 50 games, but we have a game that a team that can play 15 really well, and that's what we're going to try to do. Yeah, and maybe if my grandma had wheels, she'd be a bicycle. Have you ever, have you ever seen that one? Have you ever seen no. that, that YouTube video? <laughs> I forget. There's some Italian chef is making a pasta dish, and it's on TV, right? So they have the TV host there, and she's like, oh, well, like it's like this. If you just added ham to it, it would be this, right? And he goes... And if my grandma had wheels, she'd be a bicycle. And it's like, <laughs> I just, anyway, that was just me. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Um, I'm, I'm, you were thinking if she had wheels, she'd be a train. You were thinking yeah, of train. I, I mean, sure. Why not? Um, I'm a little, I'm a little loopy. The time change and everything else is stupid and it makes me angry. And I have a toddler who's like, no, it's not time to go to bed. It's, I still got an hour to go. So, uh, he's been bouncing off the wall. So that's been fun too. So listen, I am personally of the belief that things are going to be a lot better here in, you know, a month. Uh, but it's probably going to be a month. I don't think it's going to be less than a month. As you said, you know, Chicha and Costa probably not back this game, the home opener, even though they're returned to play. Uh, Greg Vanny talked about that. Um, you know, I don't see I don't see Lucas Caligari being ready to play right away. Um, he probably needs a week or two. Even if he arrives this week, I don't think he starts against Vancouver. Um, so that's that's something to sort of keep an eye on. They're still going after this, this Julian uh, Aude and... That seems like that's progressed and now to a point where we should probably be expecting an announcement here and maybe this week or, or the beginning of next week. So then that'll be another two weeks before he joins that type of thing. So, I mean, you're starting to try to put this together to look. And, you know, I even went and grabbed the LA Galaxy's schedule real quick. So they got Vancouver for the home opener. Then they go away to Portland. Portland looks like a decent team. St. Louis just beat them. That was a little bit of a surprise. But Portland looks like a decent enough team. Uh, then the LA Galaxy hosts Seattle. And as you rightfully, as you pointed out at the beginning, you said, hey, that's Seattle. They're back. They're back. And they they might be. They lost to Cincinnati, but they they might be a pretty good team. So Seattle's up there. The Galaxy will then um, uh, go to Houston. Again, another Texas team. Houston is the only team currently below the LA Galaxy in the Western Conference standings. Uh, then it is an El Trafico on April 16th. LA Galaxy host LAFC. Uh, that'll be the first one of the season after the Rose Bowl game was uh, moved. The Galaxy host Austin. Austin seems like a team that has been flying outside of uh, their loss to St. Louis at home to sort of start their stuff. And then they have Orlando. Orlando's one of the top teams in the East. We remember when we did this a couple while uh, a, a little while ago, Kevin. And we were like, "Man, it doesn't seem like the Galaxy have any easy games." Do you know what that usually indicates? Is that the the team that you're watching and that you're comparing to all this isn't very good, right? The LA Galaxy must not be very good. If I look at all those and go, "Well, there's not a lot of winnable games in there," right? At least well, from what you're seeing you now. You mentioned Orlando, the reigning U.S. Open Cup champions, one of seven unbeaten teams. There are seven unbeaten teams after match day three. Um, see what I did there, match day three. You Good like job. That? You're you're just uh, um, the assimilation has begun. Yeah, seven unbeaten teams. St. Louis being one of them, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Good surprise. Uh, not not only St. Louis. 
Hold, hold on. St. Atlanta, Louis support, L- L- St. Louis is Garth a porter Lagerway, shield. Garth, Garth Lagerway has really turned Atlanta around. They're unbeaten right now. They are. Um, but St. Louis, the only team with uh, three wins from three games so far. Uh, St. Louis with nine points leading the supporter shield as it goes. So that's that's an interesting one. Maybe St. Louis is for real. Maybe not. I'm, I'm, eh, there's a lot of adrenaline at the beginning of the year, right? There's a lot of teams that aren't exactly uh, locked in, ready to go. But St. Louis could be a good team this year. Um, What's their goal differential? Uh, let's see. I will pull it up for you. Uh, goal differential is a plus four. Plus four. Atlanta's it- plus four. Nashville's plus four. Uh, Cincinnati plus two, LAFC plus five, Seattle plus five, Miami plus three, the Galaxy minus two, just in case you were wondering. I would love to show you where the LA Galaxy are in the supporter shield, but they're way down at the bottom and I couldn't fit it all on my screen. Um, I was just going to say St. Louis is the only team with a goalkeeper that makes more than a million dollars a year. He was one of their first, I think it was their first signing actually, maybe their second Always fun. Um, all right, let's get to this game a little bit. LA Galaxy 0-0 against uh, Sporting Kansas City lineup was as expected. Um, and usually I'll argue with the lineup graphics, and I kind of agree it was a 4-5-1 because there's no way that you can tell me that there weren't five central midfielders playing in that game. Efrain Alvarez is not a winger. He's a central midfielder. Uh, Mark Delgado is a central midfielder. Gaston Brugman is a central midfielder. Ricky P- Puj is a central midfielder. And Memo Rodriguez probably is a central midfielder, although he certainly is probably the most switchable of those. Um, it, we saw this in the first game. Now, the first game, uh, remember, the LA Galaxy said that they saw Minnesota go into Dallas, Kevin, and they saw that Minnesota just bunkered and just you know stole stole three points from Dallas, right? They were, they were able to just hold in there, absorb the pressure. They countered when they did, and they stole a goal, and they ended up winning the game. And Jonathan Bond came in after that and said, you know, we don't want to play that way. We want to play our style of soccer. We want to do our things. And in some ways, I think against Sporting Kansas City, you could say, that the LA Galaxy did play their style because they did win the possession battle, right? They still had more passes. They had all the things that sort of indicate an LA Galaxy possession-based game. But when you also look at average positioning and where everybody was, I would also argue that the LA Galaxy bunkered a whole bunch, mostly because Kansas City was just shooting from every possible angle, uh, and Jonathan Bond had 11 saves. 30 shots? 30 shots, right? They had 30 shots. I believe it's the second most in MLS history in a game in which the team did not score. 30 shots, eight on target. Well, no, they had 11 on target because 11 saves. None yeah. of them were really difficult for for Bond. As you mentioned, they won, the Galaxy won the possession battle. So, I mean, you look at this thing statistically, and it, it just it doesn't make any sense. The Galaxy had 52% possession, but only, I believe, they had eight shots. Mm-hmm. Um Kansas City, 30 shots from 48 uh, present possession. Yep. Um, it it just it and you were right. They were shooting from every which way, and none of the you know none of them were difficult uh, uh, chances. I don't I didn't think. Um, it, it was just a really bizarre game. I don't think Kansas City scored this season. Yeah, it, it was. It, it, listen, I think everybody's thankful. I think all Galaxy fans are thankful that uh, that. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Johnny Russell. That's who it was. Uh, Johnny Russell was not in this game, right? He's a galaxy killer and he usually is the one who can find it. I'm just looking at this. The crazy thing here is usually we can look at expected goals, right? And I'm going to give you the expected goals number. Everybody close your eyes. If you're watching, I'm, I'm, I'm giving everybody close your eyes. Kevin, you close your eyes too. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to put a graphic up on the screen, uh, and I want you to think about it before. So SKC had an expected goals of 1.5. The LA Galaxy had an expected goals of 0.4, all right? Do you remember any clear chances for Sporting Kansas City where you were like, absolutely, that should have been a goal? There was, no. there, there was I think there was one. There was one. I think there's one chance in this whole night, and you can open your eyes now. Um, everybody can open their eyes. If you go look at Sporting Kansas City's expected goals. By the way, if you were driving, don't do that. Yeah, no, I was going to say, that's too late now. We're in trouble. Yeah. We, we already caused a problem. Um. If you go and look at expected goals for Kansas City, you're going to see little tiny stair steps up, 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 which means low percentage chance up, up. This is one of the things that we actually talked about in regards to the LA Galaxy. The LA Galaxy had very good expected goals numbers last year, but whenever you broke it down by sort of the average expected goals chance, their average expected was actually really low, which means that you take a lot of shots from rather low probability areas and yes they hit the target and yes it was but the chances of scoring from there are actually pretty slim that was sporting kansas city all night stair step stair step stair step step little tiny little tiny shots so they were taking shots 
And I think if you want to credit people, one, Jonathan Bond has to be one of the guys that you sit there and say he made all the saves he was supposed to make. Nothing was too crazy. Um, but then let's look at that defense because this defense is a place that has been shaky, Kevin. Uh, the back line with Kelvin Leardam, Jalen Neal gets his first MLS start. Uh, played Martin, great. Play, he, played, great. He, played, he played very well. For, for a youngster, he played very well. Uh, Martin Caceres in there and Raheem Edwards. So that's your back line. I will tell you right now, I don't know that I have seen the LA Galaxy as comfortable in the center backs with uh, Jalen Neal and Martin Caceres to get next to each other. Um, I really, really like that that thing. Listen. I know everybody's going to tell you Jalen Neal was one of the best players on the night. He was actually he was a very good player for the night. Uh, the LA Galaxy as a whole had horrible performances across the board from everybody. Martin Caceres was probably the better center back on that night. Granted, let's let's be very careful for a second. Uh, Caceres has like World Cup experience. Jalen Neal is making yeah yeah. Jalen Neal is a teenager. <laughs> right, he's a teenager. I so you should see that right. But Caceres was probably the better. Jalen had a couple of passes. I would say that the Galaxy midfield had a horrible game. In fact, if we look at the ratings, you this is always fun. Uh, orange usually means not very good, right? And so everybody but Gaston Brugman on the entire LA Galaxy starting lineup is in the orange, right? So they had Martin Caceres at six point seven. They had Neal at a six point four. Leardam on the outside, I thought he was fine at six point six. Edwards with a six point six again, fine. Um, Brugman was a 7.4. I'll tell you right now, Ricky Pooge and Gaston Brugman had some of their worst performances in LA Galaxy kits against Sporting Kansas City. There was not a lot for them to do. Uh, Ricky gave the ball away too easily. Gaston gave the ball away too easy. Efrain Alvarez continued his uh, habit of dribbl dribbling into coverage. Uh, Memo Rodriguez was sort of missing in action for most of that game. Sporting Kansas City did a good job of blanketing Ricky with coverage and pressure. And SKC was trying to pressure sort of right across whenever they came across the half line, which is where Brugman likes to pick the ball up, which is why it's a good place to pressure. Brugman picks the ball up where Ricky sort of picks the ball up in those areas. And that's where they were trying to apply that pressure. I thought SKC got a lot of the game plan right. The first half was atrocious for the LA Galaxy. Um, you know, didn't really have that possession game that they were going. Never looked dangerous offensively. Nothing going for it whatsoever. Dayon Jovalic, I said after two games, he's going to get a lot of stick. Um, for for not being involved in the game, I don't think um, I don't think Dayon Jovalich had a touch in the box in this game. There was he did not get the ball in the box. Some of that's him, absolutely. And the reason that you know it can be him uh, is that Preston Judd came on and immediately got a touch inside the box. Okay, so so Jovalich has to sort of prove that he belongs as a starter. And so far through two games, he hasn't. The other part is that with no wing play, Kevin. And let's be, do you want uh, average positions is hysterical. Um, so, so, so narrow, so narrow, so bunched, no width whatsoever. The widest players are going to be uh, Kelvin Leardam on the right side and Raheem Edwards on the left side. And you get a lot of that from the LA Galaxy's outside backs. That's something. But when you see Memo Rodriguez tucked in, when you see Efrain Alvarez tucked in, everybody's tucked into the center. Well, and see, I don't understand that. Why, why Vanny is going after, you know, it, it seems to be his focus is, is outside backs, which is fine. But I, I really think the Galaxy needs some wingers if they're going to be able to feed Chicharito, and that's the way that they've been successful, I think, the last two seasons. Play wide, as you mentioned. Get the ball into the box to Chicharito. He's going to play as a, as a lone striker up front. Uh, and and if they're not getting that width and they're not getting the ball into the box, that's going to be a problem because Chicharito is not going to come outside and get it. The other, you know, you mentioned Bond, too. One thing I want to say is, yeah, he had the 11 saves, a solid game, not very difficult saves. Kansas City didn't really test him, but he did something I really like, and maybe this is part of the reason why they were able to hold them scoreless. He didn't give up a lot of rebounds. He 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 was seemed to favor touching the ball over the top of the goal or or pushing it out to the side or just catching the ball. He gave up nine corner kicks, or the Galaxy gave up nine corner kicks, which is dangerous. Right. But he didn't give up any rebounds. And so with with Kansas City shooting from bizarre angles or from distance, with Jonathan Bond catching the ball or, or lifting it over the net. Um, it, it resulting in the corner kick. There, there was no, I, I, I think maybe Kansas City might have been playing for, you know, in the hope that maybe he'd push the ball out and they'd be able to score on the rebound. And he didn't give up any second chances. No, no second chances. Uh, his distribution, I thought, was better in this game than it was in the first game. He had a very bad distribution game uh, in the first game. So I, I thought he was better. Again, solid, good. I'm glad. I'm glad he got the clean sheet. All those things are good. I'm glad he was man of the match. That's fine. Um, you know, you're, you're trying to find things that, that can change. And, and, 
One of the things Chicharito does that I don't think Jovalich does as well, um, which is, again, you're comparing somebody who's been uh, at the top level of the world in, in Javier Hernandez to, to Dan Jovalich, who really hasn't. Um, so it's, it's, it's okay that there's a difference there, but Chicharito gets involved in the play, Kevin, he'll come back and get the ball. He'll come back into the midfield and get it. And a lot of times that springs open and creates chances. I know people don't love that because you're like, Oh, well, Chicharito needs it. Listen, Chicharito, whenever he does that, always finds a way to get back in the box and be on the end of the pass. Right? So he may come back and drop in and he may make a pass here and there to sort of break people free. He may draw defenders with him to open space. Jovalich isn't doing that right now. He's not drawing defenders. He's not opening space. Uh, and you know, I think some of the criticism has to come in the way the Galaxy are playing as well, which is you don't have wide players. You know, Tyler Boyd came into this game in the second half um, and was the only wide player. At that point, it almost didn't matter. Sporting Kansas City had set up shop basically in the LA Galaxy half and was just pinging shots off like crazy. The Galaxy got a couple good chances. Preston Judd came on. Um, if you're asking me against Vancouver, if I change anything, I might start Preston Judd. I, I know that that sounds nuts to already sort of say, oh, you bringing Jovalich off the bench has been a proven thing that works. And Preston Judd has, every time he's come in now in the two short appearances he had, has been dangerous. Something has happened. The ball has found him. He's gotten in places. He's done things, right? So I don't know if you don't make that change or if you do, and, and that's fine too. Maybe you don't because you're worried about Jovalich's state of mind, right? And you don't want to pull him from that. This is his chance. Uh, to sort of prove that he wants to be the starter. Remember, he was he was begging for starter minutes. So now he has to prove it. And the pressure is on him. He has to find a way. And it almost doesn't matter that the LA Galaxy are giving him like no surface, which is crazy to say. But it's kind of like Greg Vanny that we were saying too, Kev, which was, you know, Vanny's in this position. He's got to perform. Jovalich is in this position. You got to perform. It almost doesn't matter what's happening around you. You have to find you know, the ability to, to to put the ball in the back of the net and do it. And he did it in the first game, but let's remember that he was missing in action for most of that game and wasn't involved. Um, so, uh, yes, I can discount the first goal that he scored of the season, the only goal the Galaxy has scored this year. Jovalic has to be better, and he has to find a way to get involved in this game, and Greg Vanny has to find a way to get him involved. Um, and then you have to hope that Chicharito comes back and he's ready to go in 100%, because... Right now, Jovalich is not able to carry the load so far of what we've been seeing. Oh, oh, again, two games in. I'm not overly concerned, but I don't think Jovalich is, and I've said this before, I don't think he's your starter. I think he's a great backup, though. Um, I think he's a great guy off the bench. You were talking about coming off the bench. It, you know, it, He's a great guy to come off the bench. The Galaxy rely on a lot of young players, too. In addition to Jalen Neal, Aguirre, Preston Judge. I mean, be young, both young and, and in, inexperienced in terms of MLS. But Tyler Boyd, for that matter, doesn't have any experience in MLS. A lot of young, inexperienced guys. It, it, I want to say it reminds me of 2017, but it doesn't because these, these players are much better than the ones yeah. they had in 2017. And the other thing is, is you give these guys some minutes now. And, and as you said, I thought Preston Judge was very impressive. Obviously, Jalen Neal is going to get a lot of minutes this year. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe not so much for Aguirre, but those guys getting some minutes now, um, they're going to be counted on for depth later. I mean, this team is going to fill out. This roster is going to fill out. Aguirre might not even dress for games in the middle of the season. But when he does, whether it's U.S. Open Cup, Leagues Cup, whatever, he's going to have a little bit of experience. And, and so I, I think, I think Vanny's wise in that way too, knowing that, look, this isn't the team we're going to have. We're going to get better. Let's give these guys some minutes now. So when we rely on them and we will, right. they're going to have to, that those yeah. guys are prepared and have a little bit of confidence too. Yeah. And, and you can see that. I mean, you know, let's take, let's, let's go back to the positives because I think, you know, I started talking about the defense. I thought the defense was a positive. Um, no horrible mistakes, no big, you know, especially with Raheem but, Edwards. But can and, you, when you give up 30 shots, I mean, that's on the defense. 11, Is that a positive? 11 block shots by the defense, too. Let's let's take okay. that in. So, so, yes, you had 30 shots, but 11 of those were blocked, right? I think eight of those were off target, right? So now add eight and 11, right? So that's 19 of your 30 never saw the goal, right? So, I mean, yes, you're right. And I would say that the midfield had a very poor game. Um, whenever you talk about Brugman, uh, I thought he had a poor game. Thought Ricky Pouche was the worst I've seen him play for the Galaxy, and even Greg Vanny afterwards sort of alluded to that. And he said, "Listen, I think uh, I think Alex Ruiz asked the question, but he sort of said, you know, what did you see from Ricky Pouche, and you know, how do you sort of assess his his gameplay?" And he's like, "I think," he, and Vanny goes, "I think he, I saw what we all saw, which is that there were times when Ricky Pouche made the passes that we expect Ricky to make, and he's and there were times when he gave the ball away and he did some stuff that we're not used to seeing him do. I think that's a fair assessment of Ricky." Um, but there's also a lot of pressure on Ricky. Who's the dangerous player on this team? Ricky Pouche. Who's the second most dangerous player on this team? Probably Gaston Brugman. 
So you can focus a lot of your energy, and I think Sporting Kansas City did, to plugging the center of that field and not letting those guys get on the ball. And when they do, the LA Galaxy are kind of toothless, right? Okay. And, and we're going to see that all season because when those guys came in at the end of last season, a lot of teams hadn't seen them. They, they scouted them, but it wasn't the same as seeing them in person. Everyone's kind of had a little bit of a sense, and they've had an offseason, too, to prepare. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think you're going to see teams do exactly what Kansas City did to that galaxy midfield and, and, and really make them have to adjust it. The, the key now is those guys have to adjust teams have adjusted to them. Now the galaxy have to adjust to the adjustments. Yeah. Um, I also think that again, this is an incomplete team. Give me, give me, um, you know, Caligari on the right hand side, a guy with speed, a guy who can run up and down the flanks, who really is more of a Julian Araujo. I mean, listen, Kelvin Leardam, bless him, but he's not Julian Araujo. And you know, this, this new guy, Caligari could be someone in a similar vein to Julian Araujo, and that's where the LA Galaxy have found their success, Kevin, right? We all agree. It's the outside backs getting into the attack. It's the overloads that those create. It's all those things. Well, Kelvin Leardam, the one time really that he has gotten forward in two games was the goal that Dayan Jovalich scored, right? And I, listen, I'm not a big proponent of making like Kelvin Leardam be a forward attacking defender because he's going to get burned on the way back. So you have to be really cautious with the risks that you make. But also, you know, Julian Araujo and Mark Delgado had a good... Uh, relationship whenever they were there. And it was that, you know, if Rahu went forward, the Delgado was supposed to play back. Well, you know, Kelvin Leardam can get forward. Let him go. Um, you know, and then the real problem comes on Raheem Edwards' side, which is usually where Ricky Pouge likes to hang out. Um, and so whenever whenever Raheem Edwards goes forward, there's nobody covering that. So then usually Brugman has to come over and try to slide into that left side. But what does Gaston Brugman like to do? Get forward and score goals sometimes, right? So you can see the problems they're having and it's become because they can't unbalance defenses is because they aren't creating the overloads. Um, you know, the one time that I think they really got an overload was whenever they put Judd into the box and all of a sudden there were more guys on that side than Kansas City could cover and there was a little bit of space on that for a second. Um, but yeah, Jalen Neal, let's, I, can we focus on him? Just how much fun is it to watch a young kid like this sort of come in and, and I, I this is, these are my favorite things. Uh, Jalen Neal is like this kid who has the best head on his shoulders. He's calm. He's collected. It doesn't matter what situation you put him in. He talks to the press. He's fine. He's calm. He can express himself. Uh, you put him out on the field in Sporting Kansas City in a loud environment. And Jonathan Bond said, the, you know, the communication there was difficult. Um, you put him in that and he comes away really with flying colors. Had some bad passes. Absolutely. Um, didn't get turned too often. I think he blocked five shots. Um, as, as a matter of fact, I had, uh, Alex Ruiz's thing. Yeah. 58 of 60 passing. So 97% passing five blocks, three clearances, five recoveries, one interception. I mean, put it on a stat sheet, put it on a card, uh, tops did, they put it on a card so you can get your Jalen Neal MLS debut card from tops, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so you can order those. Uh, I may have ordered a couple you, and we may, we were going to give some out whenever they come in. So you, you may have, you don't know if you did or not. Uh huh. What, what? You're, you don't know if you, you said I may have ordered a couple. You I may have. I, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Don't well, know. A couple of things I like about Jalen Neal. First of all, he's, he's very confident. For a young player, he's very confident. He acts like he belongs there. And the more you act like you belong there, the sooner you are going to belong there. Um, you know, he's very confident. Mistakes don't seem to, to bother him. I saw him make a pretty bad mistake with the U.S. national team in his first game. And, um, you know, with young players, a lot of times that they start thinking about that for the rest of the game. Jalen Neal let it go immediately. And that's really important. And it's very difficult for a young player who doesn't know when his next opportunity is going to come. It's very difficult for a young player to do that. The other thing I like about Jalen is his mom. His mom is awesome. It's, <laughs> it's great watching her on social media get all excited about her son playing because we're just used to a lot of these, these uh, players and parents acting like they've always been there and they've always done that. And that's not true. Yeah. And so to see Sarah get all excited about uh, uh, Jalen Neal has been awesome as well. It was uh, I asked him afterwards when he found out he was starting and, and b what happened whenever he told his mom. Right. That was that was my question. And he goes, he goes, oh, he goes, you know, I didn't find out until after our lunch today. So the day of the game that he was starting. Right. So, you know, Greg, leaving it. That's fine. You can always keep the guys on edge a little bit. And who's going to start? So Jalen gets it. And he texted. He said that he texted his mom. Uh, and then his mom uh, called him and left a voicemail and he goes, which she never does. I'm sure let, he means on like game day, <laughs> on game days, right? Like on game days, she won't bother him because he's doing things. But she called and he said that she was screaming and she was crying and, you know, all the all the good stuff. So uh, Sarah was that Sarah tweeted out uh, after we found out that Jalen was starting. She said, I'm, I'm ready. I'm in target and I'm ready to throw up. 
right? It's like yeah. it was great. Somebody had a response. They have a they have something for that in aisle five. Just uh, head on down there. It'll it'll that, help you out. That, that, that's interesting that Greg would do that. I, I've seen coaches with different philosophies, as you mentioned. Um, you know, and maybe there was some question about a player or something, and and so Greg didn't want to tip his hand too early. And you know, the worst thing you want to do is tell a player you're starting, and then say, "Oh, you know what? You're not starting." So for Greg to wait till the last minute, that that seems a little unusual. I know um, it 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 kind of forces every player to prepare, but then you wind up with players being disappointed when they prepared and they're not playing. Miguel Herrera, when he was coach of the Mexican national team, and I assume he did this with his clubs, he told players days ahead of time, and right. "Just you're starting, you're not, and and you know, let's go. This you know." Get, get ready, get fired up, tell your parents, whatever you have to do. Um, there was no guesswork and players love that. They, they like knowing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think, yeah, sometimes it, it gives you that good. You can do it. I like this. I like Jalen's play. He was, he was linked well with, um, with Caceres. Uh, they were next to each other. They were linked well. They didn't let anybody run off, uh, run off their shoulders. Uh, Jalen's head was on a swivel, really calm, collected. i been five block shots. So of those 11 block shots that the Galaxy kept um, from even approaching Jonathan Bond, um, Jalen had five of those, almost he, half. He, he, you know what occurs to me now? I'm just thinking about center back pairings that the Galaxy have had, the ones that, that we really you know liked and appreciated and thought were really good. You know, Omar and, and AJ. Sure, they played together in college, but they came in as rookies together. Mm-hmm. There was no veteran there. They learned together. Daniel Starris and Dave Romney, same thing. Jalen Neal has a four-time World Cup player playing next to him. Um, that's got to help a lot for a couple of reasons. I mean, Martin Caceres is not going to – nothing's going to happen in a game that he hadn't seen before. So he's going to be there to back Jalen up to help him out, but he's also going to be able to educate him and teach him yeah. um, things. I, I think that's a great pairing. Even Koulibaly a little bit, you know, he has some experience, but Caceres and Jalen Neal, I just really like that pairing. For for a debut for a, for an MLS start debut, uh, it was about as perfect as Jalen Neal can expect. Quite honestly, played himself into another start. I mean, there's zero chance if I'm Greg Vanny, I'm taking Jalen Neal anywhere right now. He, nope, you played well, you play again, and. Eventually, that's how you keep a starting spot, right? Make it so that way they can't take you off the field. And I think Jalen Neal could be in that position right now. Um, well, and and again, I you know I'm a big proponent of the mental part of the game. Um, and if you uh, have a young player who has never started an MLS game, gets his first start, plays like that, and then you say, "Good job, son, take a seat on the bench." Yeah, that could crush a guy. That could crush it a can. guy. Uh, on the other hand, you don't want him to go out and 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 then be benched after making a mistake. Maybe right. Greg's already decided he won't play in Portland, and if he has a bad game against Vancouver, Jalen's going to look at that and say, oh, you know, I made a mistake. I lost my starting job. Yep. But but we'll worry about that later. Right now, you had a guy play an amazing game, and to tell him that was an amazing game, go, go sit down, yep. that's not going to work. Yeah, and I will say I will also throw a little cold water again. I thought it was a good game. I didn't think he was perfect. I think he made mistakes, but the mistakes didn't come back to hurt him. So that was good. I thought his recoveries, whenever he made the mistakes, were good. So that's all I can ask for those kids. Um, certainly from from Jalen Neal. You know, the other thing is that uh, it's Vanny bringing in somebody like Tyler Boyd, too. And I want to see more of Tyler Boyd. He is the one actual winger the LA Galaxy have on this roster, right? If, unless you want to count Raheem Edwards as a winger, which is more of a wingback. Um, but he's the one guy. So the answer to width, right? And... Um, I, I'm a believer that Boyd can come um, come onto the field as a starter and probably Memo Rodriguez doesn't start, right? And you leave Efrain Alvarez in there. Um, or you bring in Boyd on that side and you bring Alvarez off the bench. Um, there's ways to sort of do this to provide width, but the big thing that is killing everything, it's killing Dayon Jovalich's chances at attacking. Uh, it's killing the LA Galaxy's chances at scoring goals. It's not taking pressure off of, you know, the center of the midfield with Brugman and Puj and, um, and Delgado is without that width. If you watch Puj, Brugman and Delgado, they're getting picked off knowing that they can close out the outside lane because nobody's going to be like, you can sort of leave the outside sort of open. So they're picking them off. Do you, do you think Raheem Edwards becomes a winger when they when they get yes. their the all of their outside backs in? Yes, and and it's kind of like a, a fear that I have that they're going to think that that's a solution up to this. Vanny has already sort of hinted and intimated that Efrain Alvarez and I I use Efrain. He said a player, but Efrain Alvarez is probably going to get moved over to Tam. He's going to get that U twenty two designation pulled away. They're going to put. Julian Ayude, who we imagine is still going to be signed here, they're going to put him as that U22 player, and it's because of the unlimited acquisition fees. 
Um, and from what we're seeing is it looks like maybe a loan or possibly a straight buy at $5 million. And you're like, well, how could he be $5 million? As long as the salary is under $650,000, unlimited acquisition fee. You can pay $20 million. It doesn't matter as long as the salary for Fayaude is under the 651, which is the max budget, right? So that makes sense. Moving Efrain out of that spot to TAM is a salary cap only move. It's not like he's getting any more money. He's already making, I think, $700,000 a year. So he's going to stay there and he'll be a targeted allocation money player. So they're able to do that. And then Vanny says they're holding money to be able to move in the summer inside of MLS as well. He go, And he's hinted at it now, I think, two or three times. So it seemed, and he has hinted at it at the U22 thing happening. And now Julian Ayude is about to come in, right? So like he's, when he hints, it usually means something. And so he's hinted at this happening. Um, so for me, it almost feels like they may wait on a winger, which I think is a mistake. <laughs> I think they have the TAM spot open to go get, you know, a seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollar winger. Um, and I would go get one because I don't think the Galaxy have any depth there. And I don't think that Raheem Edwards is going to be the answer at left at, at left wing. And I, I, you know, Tyler Boyd should be a starter at right wing. Um, it should send Memo Rodriguez and Efrain Alvarez down in, onto the bench. Um, and, and maybe that gets better, but to me, I need a dedicated winger, somebody who has proven international experience would be expected, um, and that can create and score goals, um, because the galaxy have an offensive problem right now, as much as they have a defensive problem, Kevin, that looks like the defense is being worked on with, uh, Caligari over on the right side. And then I could possibly coming in at the left back. So that's, that's to me is a little bit of a, a fear because it sort of seems that Vanny is setting himself up to wait for that winger in the summer. And again, that's an intra-league winger because you can't go outside the league. Well, it's great to have patience, but when when does patience then become panic? Because it seems like this has gone on a long time. Again, 18 weeks from the last playoff game to the opener, which they got another week after that. And, and still, Vanny is saying, yeah, we're... You know, we're four, now three match days coming up on four match days into the season, and we're not close to being complete. Well, I, you know, again, I've made my point. You know, I, I, they can get hot in August, and they can be the fresh team going into the playoffs, and that may make a difference. But at the same token, um, you know, it, at some point you have to sort of play your hand. You have to go and put a team on the field. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that. I, I think, I think it's fair for us to be patient as well, right? On the pot, I think I. I understand what's happening. I can see it. I don't know if that's an excuse for the galaxy. They put themselves in this position to have to sort of be super careful in this first one. So I don't know that I, uh, that anyone should feel sorry for them. They sort of, you know, they made their bed and now they lie in it. Um, but I understand the process at which they're trying to do things. And I think I can be accepting of how they're trying to do it. Um, now that it, the cool thing is that you don't have to wait like extremely long, Kevin, April 24th, I believe is the end of the, the, the window. And so that's it. Like that, you don't have to worry about it. after that, after April 24th, we're done here. We don't have to worry about it. Now it's like, okay, this team is who it is outside of the intra league person who they possibly could bring in. Uh, one of our discount discord members and somebody who's written on corner of the galaxy Ramiro in the discord has actually pulled up a list of league wingers that the galaxy could possibly go after that are inside of the league. Right? So fun to sort of see that. Yes, there are some possibilities there. And usually the, um, the clarification on that is guys who aren't starting but have been starters in the past. So it's sort of like who has been playing and who has some stuff, but it aren't starting right now because maybe they have somebody else who's in front of them or something like that that you could go get. So it's really, what if, yeah. I think one of those guys is in Colorado, Kevin Cabral, right? He used no. to be a starter and he's not starting. No, I don't think he's starting the first week. Uh-uh. Maybe he could come. Maybe he could come to the galaxy. Is it is it wrong that I chuckled whenever I saw Colorado fans talking about Kevin Cabral not adding anything in like the second half of their game against uh, I forget who they were playing uh, Colorado and was it Dallas? It might have been Dallas. I can't remember. I'll look it up. But I was so, like, I was, so, so the Galaxy aren't getting what they paid for with him. <laughs> Still paying for <laughs> uh, Colorado. It was San Jose. That one nothing game in San Jose. Um, the, it was you know it's just it's just interesting to see them going through one of the things, but. I am not one who thinks that this Galaxy team, if you give me, uh, you know, a 20, I think a 20 year old Caligari, I think a 19 year old Ayude, a 19 year old Jalen Neal and a, how old is, is Caceres? 36. <laughs> I think he's 36, yeah. right? And a 36 year old center back in Caceres. I think you have something. I actually really like a really young, athletic, uh, quick on the outside, speed on the outside, uh, you know, sort of mid uh, or, or defense. It makes sense to me. I kind I can see the building blocks they're trying to put together. So I'm not discouraged 
but I think that there is some criticism to be levied at the LA Galaxy, Greg Vanny, of not being ready to play right now, of not having those guys in already and not doing that stuff. But How, again, this, what if they went and got Ramon Alessandrini? He's I, he's been on vacation for a very long time. I watch him on Instagram all the time. Really nice guy. Would love him. Love him. I, I love Ramon, Ramon Alessandrini, so wouldn't care. Um, yeah, anyway, so I wanted to put that out there. Um, if you're looking at Team of the Week, Jonathan Bond made Team of the Week. Congratulations, Jonathan Bond. Um, he was uh, uh, he was on that list. Uh, very, again, 11 saves. Very nice. A stat pick because I don't think he faced any huge challenges, but it's the first clean sheet of the season. The LA Galaxy tend to front load their clean sheets, by the way, Kevin. They usually have these scoreless games at the beginning of the year. Um, and so we'll, we'll see if that continues or, or how that works. Well, Hey, let's, let's have fun. Let's return some of Josh's charts that we haven't seen since last year, right? Ooh, DP Ooh. minutes. This is not going to look good. No, no. Right now the, uh, the LA galaxy have only big, big surprise. Uh, they have only their DPs have only played 33.3% of the total available minutes. Um, so Javier Hernandez, zero games played, zero games start, zero minutes played. Douglas Costa, zero games played, zero games started, zero games played. Um, and Ricky Pouge has two games played, two games started, 180 total minutes, 100% on his. So 33.3%. We'll watch that as it goes along. Don't expect it's going to be great, but we'll watch it. Um, if we look at the LA Galaxy's record percent table, that's nothing right now. Again, most of these are like nothing because it's two games in and there's not a lot to look at. Uh, in 2020, the LA Galaxy also had one point through two games. Uh, so that's that's something. In 2017, they had zero points through two games. So they're, they're better than that. Uh, but if you look at 2021 and 2022, the LA Galaxy started with two wins in their first two games. So uh, five points behind that start last year already through f- the first uh, two games. <clears throat> Away points doesn't really matter right now. Home points doesn't really matter right now. Um, if we zero get to, home points. So far. Yeah, zero home points so far. That's right. Uh, Eastern Conference, if we look at Atlanta um, at the top of the Eastern Conference there, uh, it's Atlanta with seven points, Nashville with seven points, Cincinnati with seven points, then Miami, Philadelphia, and New England all with six points. Uh, Orlando, five points. DC, four points. Columbus, four points. Then you go below the line is New York City, Toronto, New York. Red Bulls, so both New York teams out. Uh, Chicago, M- Montreal, and Charlotte at the very well, bottom there. Yes, Toronto is spending a ton of money for nothing. They had their home opener. It was very snowy. They think I think they scored the first goal, uh, and then they allowed another goal in the in uh, later in that game to Columbus, and it ended one one in that particular game. So it, it's uh, funny, you know, a couple years ago, Bob Bradley was the genius who had reinvented coaching. And now he's really struggled the last, the last three. This is his third season where he struggled. Toronto was a mess. I mean, you know, very much so in the, in the span of Greg Vanny left and, you know, everything there that they had built through all those championships and everything had, had sort of left. So there wasn't a lot of big institutional knowledge that was left over. So they have to sort of rebuild and do stuff. Now it would be like the LA galaxy would have to do that whenever they've done that, but I think they've done it like four or five times now. So I get they're used to rebuilding and losing institutional knowledge and all that fun stuff. So, uh, interesting to see that, uh, if we, Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to talk about Western conference, Western conference right now. It is St. Louis with nine points through three games. The number one spot in the Western conference, LAFC right behind with six points. They have two wins for their first two games, Seattle, six points, um, out of their first three games there, Austin, six points. San Jose, six points, Dallas, four points, Minnesota, four points, Portland, three, Salt Lake City, three, and then you have Kansas City with two points, Vancouver with one, LA with one, Colorado with one, and Houston with zero. LA Galaxy, 12th to 14th in the Western Conference right now. Any Anything you want to pick on there? That, Are you good? that will not get them in the playoffs. I d- not right now. Not right now. 18 teams make the playoffs. The LA Galaxy are not one of those 18 teams at this particular point. Uh, top nine teams uh, making the playoffs. Raphael gave us a $5 super chat. It says, at least we have the best podcast in MLS. I wonder who they're talking about. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, I haven't heard that podcast yet. <laughs> yeah, we should. Let me know. Can you send me the Spotify check link? Check it out. Um, yeah. Supporter Shield standings at St. Louis right now. Atlanta, Nashville, Cincinnati, LAFC, Seattle, Miami, Philadelphia, Austin, San Jose, New England, Orlando, Dallas, Minnesota, and D.C. Those are your top 14 spots. Uh, I would just like to point out one interesting thing. Okay. If you look at what the LA Galaxy have done in terms of we're going to project goals, right? We're going to project goals for and goals against, and we do this the whole season. So Because we're why not after two games? Why not after two games? Exactly. So let's say if the LA Galaxy allowed this, so basically they're allowing uh, three goals in two games, right? So 1.5 goals per game. 
Uh, if you project that over the 34 games, they finish with 51 goals allowed. How many? You know what? That's exactly where Jonathan Bond has been the last two seasons. He gave I was gonna up 50 say, and 51. Yeah, it was 51. Yep. And and if you look at the LA 50. Galaxy, it was 51 last season total because it was 51. I don't know if he didn't play in a game and Klinsman did, but the Galaxy gave up yeah. 51. And then the year before that, the Galaxy gave up 54. Right. And so again, there's probably a Klinsman game in there or something like that that sort of moves it for Bond. But that means they would have. So that's what the defense. So this defense through two games is the exact same defense that the Galaxy had through 34 games last year. Just, just it means nothing. But I just like to point out that it's just an interesting thing. Um, everybody's favorite. They only chart. scored 17 goals, and Chicharito scored more than that by himself. He did. He scored 18. So good job, good job for him. Uh, points per month right now. I had to adjust my chart because they didn't play in February, which is fun. Uh, another game in September, but that's where this everybody's favorite chart is. LA Galaxy a loss on a draw through March right now. So uh, uh, 0.5, yeah, 0.5 uh, points per you game. You know what everybody would say to all these stats you just said? What? Small sample size. Well, you think? How dare yeah, they? Small sample it's size. cold outside. It's cold outside. That's why it's small. Uh, let's see. We had an update from Julie Michels, who's been covering this, uh, Julian Aude, uh, from Lanus. And basically it said the leadership of Lanus returned from the U S with practically a total agreement for the sale of, uh, Julian Aude, uh, to the Los Angeles Galaxy, where the fullback will sign a five year contract, 19 year old signing five year contract makes some sense. Uh, the galaxy love to do that, but those have usually not fared all that well, but we'll see. Uh, the procedures are already underway for IOD to sign with the LA Galaxy, but that will take a few days. So again, expecting that in a few days. This seems like it's a lock um, in terms of it coming in. So far... What? Five years, man. I don't know. They, they, they did that with Cabral. Didn't work. Did it with... Grant Sear had a long-term contract. Didn't work. Um, five years. I mean, I get I, I I understand the thinking Shelvick? behind it. Shelvick had like five years. I yeah. think people Gonzalez had five years or maybe four. Yeah, they, yeah. I, I understand the thinking, but it's got to work at least one. Maybe they're rolling the dice saying, you know, hey, it hasn't worked yet. It's got to work at, at some point. At some point, it works out. LA Galaxy getting ready for the home opener coming up on Saturday, March 18th, 7.30 p.m. is the LA Galaxy hosting the Vancouver Whitecaps. Uh, Galaxy running all sorts of promos on all sorts of things. The beer pack right now, one ticket plus one beer is starting at $30. Um, so that's one of those. There's, I think there was a buy one, get one that was running through YMCA. Um, there's all sorts of little deals that are out there right now that are going on. Wanted to give you a timeline for this as well. Kickoff. Um, and so basically they had Eric Zavaleta at Nikki Sports tonight. Uh, they're going to have a Twitch stream with the, uh, with the guys who play for the EMLS. And that also includes uh, Dayon Yovel, which is going to be part of that as well. So uh, that's going to be happening at 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, uh, between 12 and 7 p.m. on Wednesday, 23% off. Yes, 23% off uh, one item at the LA Galaxy Team Store. Thursday, 5.30 to 7 p.m., it's happy hour with Juninho, Marcelo Sarvas, and Rafael Garcia at Absolution Brewing Company. Friday, all day special deals at bar partners and partner locations. And then Sunday, the LA Galaxy and Rad Coffee event with Mark Delgado. That'll be the day after the game as well. That's from 12 to 4 p.m. So that's why, happening. Why, 20, why is 23% off? How'd they get that figure? 2023, the year. Yeah, I, I had to think oh, about it for a second. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. I know it was it was right there and it, it seemed but it doesn't seem like I was I was it like, should what? have been then twenty two twenty three percent off like like you know yep a range twenty twenty three absolutely that would good. it was now on uh, the counter programming I should say is the LA Galaxy supporters groups have also announced and this was from the LA Riot Squad but Angel City Brigade has also announced this as well uh, L L LA Riot Squad says there will be a protest outside the stadium in Legends Plaza at 6:30 p.m. on 3:18 before the first home game this is open to all Galaxy fans whether you're part of a supporter group or not if you want to hold the leaders at the Galaxy accountable and make your voice heard bring a sign your voice or anything you can and protest on the 18th after we will watch the game at our local viewing party location because of course they're not going to be going in there another thing that happened today as well Angel City Brigade put out a video um, it was a tweet. It was an Instagram reel. It was all those things. And uh, Angel City Brigade said, Klein and the LA Galaxy leadership have lied to us year after year, promising change. It's not. It's a, it's been now 14 years, and Klein has been given yet another extension, continuing to choose finance over fans. Enough is enough. We deserve better. We deserve accountability. We deserve change. So, protests before the game in Legends Plaza. That will be there. I think. Uh, I think I'll be there. I'm going to try to be there and cover it, and we'll see if anybody else is there to try and cover it as well. So. Um, going to be interesting. And then I'm very interesting to see, this is where the rubber meets the road, right? We have in, we have been talking in theories. We've been talking in guesses and hypotheses, uh, hypotheses. 
Um, I don't know what you're the you're the wordsmith. Would that just be auto corrected on your computer so you wouldn't worry about that one? Yeah, yeah, I don't okay. have to worry about that. Okay, but we've we've talked in in these guesses and these conjectures, and now we will get to see actuality. What is happening? How many people show up to a protest? How many people are in the stadium? Will it be noticeable? You know, I noticed it in preseason. Is it noticeable inside the stadium if it's a sellout crowd of twenty six thousand people? Are you going to be able to tell that the supporters groups aren't there? Um, so. That's the interesting thing to me. And then Raphael gave us another $5 super chat. Thank you for that. And says attendance guesses announced an actual butts in the seat. See, that's the thing. Most of the supporters groups, Kevin, we know this are sold season tickets. So those tickets are probably already sold. will be counted in actual attendance numbers, right? Um, whenever they give it to us because it's tickets distributed, right? Um, so how about how many people are actually in the stadium on the night? Certainly interesting. I, I mean, from a neutral perspective, you have to sort of be sitting there and saying, okay, let's see. Let's see what this is. Let's see how this goes. Um, because there's been a lot of noise made and maybe it's a vocal minority. I'm not saying I think it is, but maybe it's a vocal minority. Maybe we show up to the stadium. It's packed. It's loud. Everything. And it seems like, you know, like everything is normal as usual. Um, but we get to I, see that. I, I think I, I don't think the noise will be there. I mean, we're going to be missing the drums and, and the chants and and those things aren't going to happen from the fans of city on the, on on the on the east and west sides. I, I tend to agree with you. But I'm saying we won't have to guess. We will know no, we'll because know. we will get to watch and we will get to hear and we will get to experience the atmosphere of what it's like. Um, super interesting, just from a, a chess play, a chess match sort of view. Moves that are made and all sorts of things that are happening. So yeah, you know who likes to play chess is Dayon. Jonathan Bond does now too because Dayon got him yeah. into it, right? So I don't want to hang out with those guys. I don't need another hobby. I'm good. It's, it sounds like a lot of work. I'm just, it, and you have to be smart. And I don't, I don't want to ever pretend that I'm either of those things. One that I have time or two that I'm smart. So that's what we got. A anything else that you want to touch on before we get out of here? Is there anything exciting that you wanted to talk about? Are you, do you, are you think you're going to get some pupusas um, on, on Saturday? Oh, yeah. Forget about that. Yes. If I'm, there are pupusas there, uh, we will, we will be consuming many. I will. I, I, will, I, will we I, not? I yeah, oh yes, I will. I will definitely. I want to consume. Um, I will talk more about that too. I, AFJA runs that booth, right? And the stuff that they're doing for, uh, for kids and just you know in, in El Salvador and the soccer program they have is just amazing. It's like if I want to give my money to anything, that's the stuff I will gladly give you money to like to do that. That is the absolute purest of intentions is to let kids play. Especially soccer. when they give you, especially when they give you back pupusa in exchange. And by the way. Do they have a national panda day promotion? I don't because know because that would be awesome if they did. I don't. I hope they don't. They nobody needs to pander to you or your friends. Oh, pander um, with panda. I like that. Yeah. Did you like that? Nobody needs to panda yeah, yeah. or panda or Pan, no, no. You were no. just Pan how you had it. Just, oh, okay. Yeah, you had it. I'll I'll leave it alone then. All right. Um, yeah, we, we will have a show on Thursday. We'll get you ready for the game on Saturday. Some of you will be there. Some of you won't. Regardless, we hope that you enjoyed the podcast, that you stick around, that you listen, and that you hear everything that we will bring you after this game next Monday when you and I will get to talk about uh, right. the game. And in the meantime, we're going to go searching for that best podcast. I'd like yeah, to hear that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you just type that in? Best LA Galaxy podcast. And then it'll just yeah. pop right up, I'm sure. I'm sure that's what it is. I'm sure that's how it works. All right. Uh, anything else? We good? No, I think we're good. Okay. If you're looking for Mr. Kevin Baxter on Twitter, it's at KBaxter11. Head on over to LATimes.com. Kevin's going to have a weekly column, um, and that column has already started. Uh, so check that out in the newspaper online, all those fun places, LATimes.com for Kevin Baxter, uh, the panda himself. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at JGuessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. CornerTheGalaxy.com is where you can find all the shows, any of the writing stuff that we find important is up there as well. CornerTheGalaxy.com. Hope everybody will be uh, joining us on Thursdays, we get you ready for the game. Uh, and some will, some of you will see half the game on Saturday. All right, for Kevin the Panda Baxter, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening. You've been watching to Corner of the Galaxy from the Box on CornerTheGalaxy.com. Shout out Gary, five dollar super chat. Appreciate it. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on CornerTheGalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>